Hello, it's Jason here from Custom Cans, and today, just for something a bit different, we're going to be going through the design process. We're going to design something, because um, I recently did a video on an upgrade for the Hi-Fi Man Sundara Closed, and someone pointed out that Hi-Fi Man don't seem to sell retaining rings that allow you to fit different pads to these. So they said it would be good if something like that was available. And I'm thinking, yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. It's not a particularly interesting product, but the design process might be interesting to some people. So if you want to see how I would kind of reverse engineer this and create a, a new part that would uh, that would fit, we'll go through that process today. Now then in the modern era of 3D printers being super available and costing a couple of hundred pounds, I think some basic design skills are really useful in, in everyday life because there's often things that you want that don't exist or a part that's difficult to find or there's just just a little bit something sometimes things are very expensive for no apparent reason and you could probably 3d print a thing that would do what you want and as i was setting up for this shoot it reminded me of uh, one of my favorite ones we had these little cameras the eye it's called and these have got a sony sensor in and really good color management and but the problem is a lot of the videos that we shoot are kind of over an hour of actual shooting time and the internal battery just wouldn't keep up and you don't have to keep changing batteries and that kind of thing so we would normally run it off the USB power just while we're doing it but eventually the USB socket died in there I tried to solder it back together it didn't go well it's not not very easy to repair so I kind of wrote this off bought another camera and the image quality was just not as good like the colors weren't as good that kind of thing so I thought I'd see if there was some way that I could repair this and that's when I came up with this thing here so Basically, it is an 18650 battery cell in the side here in like a little grip that you can grab hold of. On the top here, I've added a little thing so I can add a video light and then it all comes up. And this little lump here is the same size as the original battery that used to go in the bottom. And I've just run some wires up to make the contacts. And now I can basically combine Pachow. There you go. I can hold that more easily. It works again because it's got power from the 18650 cell. It means we can shoot for a couple of hours quite easily. Uh, these batteries are very cheap easy to replace so that's good I made a little hole in the bottom so it can fit on the tripod so yeah so like an hour's design work I've suddenly got something that was much better than it was before better suited to the thing and uh, and yeah it saved this camera from landfill so yes some basic design skills useful all the time just for little little bobs bits and bobs so as I said we're gonna be making a ring for that uh, let me just get the camera actually set up and then we will uh, we'll go through the design process okay so this is a really good one to start off with because it's super easy uh, there's not really a lot of design work involved this is more reverse engineering so we essentially just want to copy this part here but make it compatible with biodynamic type pads so what we're going to do is we're going to just take some measurements i think these are roughly the same size judging by eye so that is 102 mil, a bare dynamic ear cup, which the pads fit over is 100, ooh, what is it, 100? 101. So, roughly 101. So, other key features. Uh, so, let's start off. So, we've got a circle, which is 101 millimeters. So, it fits the bare dynamic pads. Uh, then, we've got this hole in the center and if you look at that you'll see that it is not an oval which is a bit annoying if it was an oval it makes it easier to do in CAD because you just put in the height the width and it ovals it up but you've got to remember that all of these things have been built in CAD and there is probably an easy way of making that shape without having to take a hundred measurements and figure it all out and what I suspect looking at it from a bit of experience I suspect what they've done is basically put in some center lines so they can make it symmetrical and then they've used a spline which will start wherever that starts start off vertical and go down so basically uh, a single spline with the handle set to vertical up here horizontal there uh, so that this one's horizontal and it gets a nice smooth transition and then we just mirror it around and it will make a kind of slightly wonky oval like that so that must be how they made that shape uh, if I was being super fussy I would probably actually take the measurements off the actual driver which looks like it's a different shape it looks a bit smaller but we are we're just basically reverse engineering this piece because we know that that works and that is all gravy baby so what we're going to need is we're going to need the thickness here and 
here. Let's measure those. So that is nine mil. But because we've reduced this, this was 102. So we need to take half a mil off each side to make this 101. So we're going to make that 8.5. 8.5 mil. On the top one, we'll do the same. Just measure that top bit there. That's 20 mil ish. Uh, so we'll make it 19.5. 19.5. Okay, so I think that's the that's the main dimensions we need to start cutting this up. And then you'll also notice that this has got hooks, those are the important bit that hook into there. And there's six here, but it looks like if you space them equally, there would be eight. So I suspect what they've done is they've made one, done eight around, and then got rid of these two because it's so thin there, it would weaken it. Because I don't know if you can see, but there's little holes where the hooks have been made. Uh, so they've probably done away with the hooks there so it doesn't weaken the, the, the ring. So that's what we'll do. We'll make eight hooks around there. We'll fill in those two. And then we can just so that for, for those uh, but one thing that we need to take into consideration is ideally we want to print this flat on the bed of the printer but I don't know if you know how 3d printers work like the FDM ones but they generally build things up in layers thin layers of plastic like that until you get the shape that you want and so they're very strong if you apply a force like that or very strong if you pull on the length of the fibers but if you pull this way you're going to separate those layers if you apply too much force so if we printed it with the hooks all like that the hooks would end up being printed in layers like that and if we apply a force here where it's being hooked it's going to separate these layers out here and it's just going to snap off ideally you want to make it easy and print it all in one go but for this it's going to be a multi-part thing so i think we're going to make holes in our little thing there and then we'll make hooks separately which print on their side so that they've got their layer lines all like concentric what's it's like that so that they've got the strength in the right direction so if you push them up there it's all a continuous what's it it's going to be strong cool yes yeah, so that's what we're going to do so we'll make eight holes in there and then we'll have hooks that go into those holes cool right let's cad that up all right so let's start by getting a plane then I'm gonna make me a circle because that's gonna be nice and easy, isn't it? I'll start it at the origin so we know where everything is measured from. And we wanna make that according to my plans here. What's that, 101 mil. So I'm gonna stick in a measurement. 101. Now we have a circle roughly the right size, cool. Next, we're gonna make this hole in the middle. So uh, as I'm gonna make it symmetrical, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some center lines these are just kind of construction lines. Just so that I know where the center of everything is. All right, so then we've got center lines there and then I can do the arc there, mirror it across, happy days. So we'll start off by adding our spline in. And we can edit that in a minute. Let's put in our measurements. So with this kind of thing, it's all kind of engineering driven. So everything is kind of driven by my measurements really. So that was very close, wasn't it? 1.5, 19.5. 9 Distance from there to there is 8.5. Cool. All right, now I'm going to grab the handles of my spline and I'm going to make that one vertical so that when it matches up, it matches up vertically with the one down below. Um, vertical. This one horizontal so that looks pretty good it looks looks pretty much like that so let's mirror that around this I want to mirror it about this do that oh no I don't want to mirror that bit I want to mirror it about that line boom mirrored happy days I get both of those shift and I want to mirror that on this line boom okay so that's looking pretty good uh, and then I reckon thickness for this thing, I reckon about two mil, because that'll be quite sturdy, but not so sturdy that you can't get the, the pads on. I think the original bear dynamic, uh, yeah, 2.1 mil. So two, two mil, perfectly acceptable for these pads, and it'll give us a decent amount of strength. So we're going to extrude that two millimeters features, extrude. 
two millimeters. Hokey pokey. And then you might be tempted, if you're a product design type, to add fillets and chamfers at this point, but don't. If you want to do that, do it at the end. Uh, so yeah, if you want to round over any corners or anything, do that at the end. It makes life a lot easier. So there we have our basic shape, like Mia, like this thing, and it looks pretty similar. Uh, so now we want to make the holes for our hooks to go through. So what hopefully we can do is make one hole and then repeat that around the edge. So I'm going to select this surface, I'm going to sketch on that, sketch. Okay, again if I add a center line, if you hover over the shapes, it, it, the little dot comes up where the center is so you know where it is if you haven't used this before. And basically we're going to want a little rectangle, aren't we? Um, so I've made a rectangle. I'm just going to get the center of that rectangle. I'll fix it to our center line so it stays centered. Coincident. Boom. Okay. Ooh, come back. Okay. Now, how big are these things? Ah, we probably want to measure the the holes they're going into to give us a. So if we make the holes on our thing the same size as the holes on these headphones, should all fit nicely. Okay, so now we're going to need to figure out the hooks. And I think it's going to be best to uh, actually measure them directly off here, because this is the bit that we want to hook into. So if we get the measurements right on here, we know that our hooks are going to be in the right place. So what we want to do is kind of if we measure the size of the hole. Okay. So that's two and a half mil. Width is four mil. Cool. So that is two point five mil high. Four mil wide. And then, how far is it from there to there? So that is nearest, damn it. It's going to be uh, nine, 90 mil, 90.4. Might as well get it accurate. So that's 90.4. And what we're going to do is we're going to halve that just so that I can measure it from the center where we started everything. Okay, so we're going to make that 90.4 divided by 2. There you go. So now that hole is in the right place. Then if I cut that, so features, extrude, cut through all. Boom, now we have a hole in that thing. Now if we get that, um, you could add extra features now, but we're gonna just copy that around because sometimes SOLIDWORKS gets a bit upset if you do too much and then copy it around. Uh, so circular pattern around this circle. Oh, there you go, it's already set to eight. That's useful. Uh, so there we go, we've got eight of those. Tick, there we go. Now we've got eight equidistant holes all around the outside. Then what we'll do is we'll sketch I'm just basically gonna fill those two holes back in. Oh, no, extruded it the wrong direction. Boop, in, that's it. Boom. Right, so now they're, they're filled in. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so uh, next, we've got, we've got our holes. Next, we need to make our foot. And I was thinking what we'll do is we make the bottom of it kind of like a wedge, like that. Where's your hook? Here. Uh, it will mean that on the base plate, 
when you push them through from the back, if we make a little wedgy insert in there, it can't be pushed through too far. So we can put glue here, glue here. That'll stay in place. So uh, so these these little shoulders will locate it. So what we're going to need to do is probably put chamfers on the holes down there so we can put them in and then we need to design this hook so we know the basic dimensions of the hole that it's got to go through but the actual hooky bit let's have a look with my pad gun there. so thickness of hook one and a half mil so 1.5 mil the hookiness here I'm gonna make that one mil I think one mil of hookage should be sufficient uh, height of the hook how high does that need to be three mil three mil let's make this three mil so I think we can make that yes right let's do that okay and uh, for that we're just gonna do a little chamfer make it 45 degrees make it two mil and then we should just be able to go boop boop if i had 30 holes i'd bother mirroring it but like this you might as well just click it one at a time okay so they are all now chamfered excellent um so this is going to be the side facing the pad the other side is going to be the side facing the hooks and we're just going to add a couple more things just while we're here and then that part will be done and we need to make the little hooks so here we're going to add a fillet which is essentially a rounded over edge yeah that's quite a nice size just so where the air is coming out you haven't got a sharp edge just round that over a little bit and we'll also thin out the edge ever so slightly to make it easier to put the pads on um, so for that I'm gonna add maybe a chamfer on the other side so we're just gonna add a little chamfer to the bottom I know my printer will print at about 60 degrees before it starts to get upset so I'm gonna add so like about, about 50 degrees and then that will just give us a little edge to, to put the pad on with okay um, I just thought we probably want to leave ourselves what we've done is we've made these holes the same size as they are on the driver but we probably want to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room uh, so I might make them a little bit on the ring I'll just make them a little bit smaller just so that when we put them in uh, they've got a little bit little bit of space I'm just gonna put 0.2 mil smaller uh, on the thing there so luckily because we did all this we did a circular pattern it should make it easier to edit that so it's just one thing we have to edit so that's four mil wide I'm gonna make it 3.8 there you go so that will make and we'll make our hooks the same size and then everything will fit together but with a little bit of tolerance just because 3d printers aren't hundred percent accurate that's gonna make it fit just a little bit nicer okay let's design the hook file new part okay and if you does if you you know you can spend ages on these things but if you want to design it quickly I normally find just do a rough sketch and then add the add the measurements for this kind of thing so we know roughly what shape it is and then we just have to add the measurements in so one like that on that 45 degrees probably want just because we're hooking in we want a little step there and like that uh, like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. Alright, let's uh, start putting some measurements in. So from there to there, that's the thickness of our thing, and that wants to be 2 mil. Okay, so that's 2 mil. Meow, meow, this is going to be 45 degrees, because that's the size of the chamfer that we put in. From there. So there is also going to be two mil. Um, from there to there, is it two and a half mil? Two point five. So where's the other thing? Two and a half mil. Yeah, 
two and a half mil. Right, cool, yeah. And then if these are both 45 degrees, that's going to make that all right. Let's just make sure that's 45. Oh, 44.9. 45 degrees. Okay, might as well make this 45 degrees as well, just for neatness. Between there and there, we wanted 1.5 mil. 1.5 mil. Okay, this is all working. This bit, we wanted one mil. The hook. The height of the hook is the thing that we're missing. That's why, because uh, in SolidWorks, the let's go blue once it's fully defined. So I know that I haven't got all the measurements in there at the moment. Uh, so, because it's not completely defined by measurements. So the height of the hook. So that's the height from the base here to the hooky do. That's going to be three. Oh, look at that. It's all gone black. That means it's fully defined. Okay, so what we can do is we can make that. That will um, do the thing. And then we'll probably have to just make it look a bit sexier. So that's our thing. We're going to extrude that. There we go. Um, 3.8 mil. So that is our basic. It's your basic hook just there. Uh, now we're gonna just round off this pointy do just so it doesn't look quite so offensive. Oh, there we go. That's a nice looking hook. Ooh. Uh, I'm just gonna add a couple of chamfers so that when we stick it in the hole, it's gonna kind of help it locate. Ooh. Gonna let me do that. So I've done a half a mil chamfer on there. So yes, just as we put the hook in, these little things are going to guide it into the hole nicely, and then it will all latch in place. So that's cool. So we should be able to print that on its side. That will print nicely. Glue it in. Happy days. So we have our parts. Let us send them off to the printer and uh, then we'll stick it all together. Cool. Okie pokey. The glue is all dry and I don't know about you, but I reckon that thing and that thing, they look pretty similar. Oh, there we go with the hooks. I reckon those things, they look pretty similar. So let's see. First off, let's see if our hooks will clip into the into the headphones. Oh, that one's not glued. <laughs> Damn, I didn't leave it for long enough. But other than that one not being glued, is it gonna fit? Oh, it looks like it will. I totally the glue totally hasn't dried. Damn. But anyway, let's click those in. So there we go. Let the glue dry. That's my top tip. Well, I've ruined that. Probably have to re-glue those. Damn. Damn. Oh, why is this gorilla nonsense? Micro precise, not super fast. Right, cool. That's all in there. Uh, this gorilla glue just took way too long to dry. I don't know what must be a special long dry one. So I just cheated and used a soldering iron and smushed over the back just to fuse these little clips in there. But uh, yeah, I think if you look at that thing and you look at that thing, they look like the same thing. That's pretty, that's pretty good. The clips roughly line up. Yeah, I reckon there's a, there's a chance of this working. So I've got a bare dynamic pad here. Just pop that on. Oh, that's the moment of truth, really, isn't it? What I did wrong there was I got a little bit of super glue on the end of one of the hooks, which made it a little bit bigger. So there you go. So there's some adapter rings to take 100 mil pads. As you can see, you know, it is slightly smaller because these are 102 mil. This is 101 mil. And I suspect those pads add a little bit more to that. 
Yeah, I could have maybe gone a little bit bigger. I reckon the bear dynamics might have fitted over an extra mil, so I might have a little bit of a play around with that. So there we go, did a bit of reverse engineering, measuring measuring up this, we created a new part, which basically does what we want. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with that, it kind of, kind of works. Does it come off again? It does, it unclips. There we go, I could maybe weaken the clips a little bit, I think they're a little bit too sturdy, so they're not kind of clip, it takes more force to clip them in, but also you don't want them to break. So I'm relatively happy with that, and uh, that will then allow you to do pad rolling on the Sundara closed back. There we go, that works. As I said, normally you do the first one, it needs a little bit of adjustment, but I think we did good measuring on that one and it, and it all, seems to, all seems to work. So again, now you've got your basic design, you could do bigger ones and smaller ones. So probably doing it for a 105 mil pad, these are 100 mil pads, probably doing 105 mil or 110 mil pads. It would fill out a little bit more because it looks a little bit funny having a slightly smaller bit there, but it does the job, it does the job. And uh, we have the template on the system so we could we could do that. So I hope that was vaguely interesting, seeing some of the design process, kind of how you go about making a replacement part for a thing. So if you found that interesting, let, let, let me know. And obviously give us a, a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. Also, uh, over the past months, some people have been asking about the business, how I started the business, how big the business is, what's going on, how do you, how do you end up doing something like this? Uh, so I thought it might be interesting to do a video on the business and how it started and all that kind of stuff, because I am not probably a good business person. I'm not one of these tech bros who's like, oh, earn six figures doing what you love. I earn virtually no figures, but I have a great time, and uh, th that's what's important to me. <laughs> so if you've got any questions about the business, how I started it, what mistakes I made, what I would do differently if I started a business today, that kind of thing. So obviously I've learned so much over the past 10 years, and mistakes were made, and I've learned from every single one of them. So yeah, so stick, if you have any business related comments if you're thinking of starting your own business and you're not quite sure and whether to take the plunge or any of that kind of stuff what's what's your worries or if you started a business and you you're having trouble you can't seem to make it work anything like that stick them in the comments and i will try and go through them and see if anything that i've learned over the past 10 years is any help to anyone else um or if you're just nosy you're just not wondering hey what's this guy how does he get paid to ruin headphones just ask the questions it's fine i'm gonna stick it hopefully There'll be enough questions that I can do a video. If not, I can go back. I, I've got a collection of a few that I've had over the, over the past year or so. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it's been super awesome hanging out, and I'll see you guys again.